The objective of a soft field takeoff is to get the airplane flying as quickly as possible to eliminate the retarding force of mud, sand, high grass, snow, or other soft surfaces. This technique also reduces stress on the landing gear when operating from rough fields. During a soft field takeoff, you want to get the airplane's weight carrying capability moved from the wheels to the wings as soon as possible. You do this by establishing and maintaining a nose high pitch attitude by the use of elevator control during the takeoff roll. As in a short field takeoff, flaps should be set as recommended by the manufacturer. Once you start to taxi, keep moving so you don't get bogged down in the soft surface. Hold the elevator in the full aft position to help keep weight off of the nose wheel. Once lined up for departure, apply takeoff power. As the airplane accelerates and the nose lifts off the ground, slowly reduce elevator back pressure to maintain a positive angle of attack, keeping the airplane weight off the nose wheel. In this attitude, the airplane will fly itself off the ground. It will lift off and fly at a slower airspeed than you are accustomed to. This is due to what is called ground effect. What happens when flying very close to the ground is that you get a slight increase in lift. This is due to a reduction in induced drag caused by the effect the ground has on the flow of air along the wing. A good rule of thumb is that ground effect is most noticeable at a height above the ground equal to half of your airplane's wingspan. For a Cessna 172, the wingspan is about 36 feet. So roughly, when flying within 18 feet of the ground, you will be in ground effect. Once flying, and while just above the ground, slowly lower the pitch attitude of the nose using the elevator and let the airplane accelerate to the best angle of climb speed. Don't attempt to fly out of ground effect before the best angle of climb speed is reached. If you do so, the greater induced drag upon leaving ground effect may cause the airplane to settle back to the ground. Continue to climb at VX if there are obstacles to clear. Otherwise, once you have established a positive rate of climb, accelerate to VY, then raise the flaps. The final procedure we'll cover in this section is the soft field approach and landing. Recall that during a soft field takeoff, you want to get the airplane's weight carrying capability moved from the wheels to the wings as soon as possible. But when doing a soft field landing, the objective is to have the wings support the airplane's weight as long as practical before transferring it to the wheels. Doing this allows the airplane's forward speed to decrease so that when you do touch down, you can do so gently at minimum speed. This reduces the stress caused by the soft field on the landing gear and the whole airplane. The approach to a soft field landing can be similar to that of a long hard field landing. Use flaps as recommended by the airplane manufacturer. You can use the same final approach speed for a soft field landing as you did for the short field landing. Also, you don't have to descend as steeply unless obstacles are present. After the round out, continue to keep a small amount of power using the throttle and fly the airplane just above the surface at one or two feet. Do this as long as practical so you can be as slow as possible at touchdown. Ideally, at the minimum controllable airspeed. Once down, hold the airplane in a nose-high attitude until the elevator loses effectiveness. This is to help keep the nose wheel clear of the surface while you slow down. You don't want it to dig in and maybe nose the airplane over. Continue to hold full aft elevator and don't use the brakes. If the surface is really soft, it will stop you quick enough. In fact, you might even have to add power to keep moving and prevent becoming bogged down. One last note of caution. We reviewed short field and soft field maximum performance techniques, but not short soft field techniques. They are not required by the Airman Certification Standards and you will not be expected to demonstrate this scenario. 
Landing on a short, soft field can be done, but it requires specialized training. Many pilots prefer to do this in a tailwheel airplane, since there is additional ground clearance between the prop and the ground when operating on rough surfaces.